I will begin to speak of time reversal mirror and matrix imaging. And I will try to show you that ID that we develop in ultrasound now are applied in uh, optics. Uh, let us begin by Langevin Institute, an institute that we create in Ecole Physique Chimie in Paris, where we put together people from all kinds of waves, I will say classical waves, acoustic in the large sense, optics, microwaves, and even water wave. And we try to find what is common between all these waves and what kind of technology we can develop, like imaging or communicating or doing nice physics with all these waves. Let us begin by something which is nice physics. Uh, can we make a wave revive its past li life? And this is uh, the concept of time reversal mirror that we developed nearly 30 years ago. And in fact, we begin to look this problem with ultrasound. Why ultrasound? Because we are lucky, uh, thanks to Pierre Curie, and uh, uh, we have uh, piezoelectricity, which is well known in Ecole Physique Chimie, and piezoelectric transducers are small antennas that are linear and reversible. That is to say, each piezoelectric transducer can be a receiver or a transmitter, and they can record in receive mode exactly all the oscillation of a wave field. Uh, it is not like in optics, where when you have a CCD camera, you record only the mean, the average intensity, but you cannot record all the uh, oscillation of the optical wave field easily. Because of this, we can develop this concept that we call the time reversal mirror initially Uh, I try to play with my uh, mouse. Uh, the concept is if you surround a medium by piezoelectric transducer, if you have an acoustic source sending a wave through any heterogeneous medium, the wave will be completely uh, modified by the heterogeneity that you have in the medium. But if you record on a spatial boundary the wave field, that is to say if you have many microphones and you record exactly uh, the time series coming on each microphone and you record them in uh, electronic memory, and this is possible since we have digital memory, once you have recorded all this wave field in a second step, you can time reverse the chronology of what you have recorded and send back in reverse exactly what you receive first, last. And now if each receiver become a transmitter, because you have time reversal symmetry of the wave equation when you have no dissipation, you have exactly a wave that is going backwards. Exactly backwards, but if there is not here the source, if the wave is coming back just in free space, there is something that happens. A converging wave come back, But when it reaches the focus, it collapses. And you have the following experiment. Converging wave is following by a diverging wave, and the signals change. And because of this, when you look what comes back exactly at the initial point, it is not a point, it is a focal spot. And the size is lambda over 2, because nobody know how to create an anti-causal wave. Usually, you create anti-causal minus causal. And because of this, you have diffraction limit. If you want to have no diffraction limit, you have not only to time reverse the wave field, but you have also to time reverse the source. And time reverse the source, it means that you have to replace the source by a sink, which is, uh, in other way, uh, people call this a perfect absorber. If you can create a perfect absorber at the initial point, the wave will exactly stop, and you will have exactly the backward movie. Uh, now, this is diffraction limit and time reversal. Now, I speak initially of a point source, but now if you have any kind of source, here I speak of an acoustic source of any shape, sending a wave through a complex medium, you have exactly the same story, you record the wave field, and in a second step, uh, you can do the time reversal, but not physically, but in the computer. That is to say, from what you have recorded and put in memory, now you go in the computer 
And if you have a model of wave propagation in your computer, uh, where if you know the heterogeneity, in the computer, the wave field will back propagate, it will be time reverse and back propagate, and you will create an image of the object in the computer. It's this kind of imaging. When you are doing this, it is perfectly analog to digital holography, but in optics, holography is made for optical waves, which are usually narrow band. Here, we have a broadband spectrum. And here, the, the hologram we have, in fact, is all the content of the electronics memory. In fact, it is a broadband hologram. But you don't need to have an interference like in holography to get the information on the phase of your wave. Here, it is just because you have piezoelectric transducer that are fast enough to record all the signal. And now, you are playing, in fact, a kind of general hologram, broadband hologram. And you, in holography, you have an imaging step that you can do digitally here, for example, in software. Now, usually, you have no uh, radiating source. Usually, what you have is something else. You have a medium that you want to explore. The medium can be the body, full of small scatterer, random distribution of scatterers, plus some reflectors, which are the artery, for example, and the interface between tissue. And now, what you want to do, in fact, is to eliminate this random distribution and this reflector by an incident wave. We will speak of reflection mode time reversal. And for example, if instead of having antenna everywhere, you have only antenna along a probe, which is a rectangular probe, for example, that we put here, you can just send from all these transducers an initial plane wave, a short plane wave, that will be backscattered by all the scattering center and by all the reflectors. And you will record, sorry, and you will record the echo coming from this medium on the transducer. And now you will ask, can I do in software an imaging process in one shot? Here, you have just sent one plane wave. You listen all what is coming through the medium. If you have an idea of what are the aberrator uh, in the medium, you can, in the computer, do the backward step and create an image of your random distribution of scatter. Of course, if the scatter are very packed uh, with a mean distance smaller than half a wavelength, you will never create an exact distribution of scatters, but you will create an image, and we will discuss of this. Now, once you have this in mind, this is a kind of imaging using time reversal, and it is a one-shot imaging. You are just sending one wave. Now, today, people use this same probe, but in a very different way. If you go to the hospital or even uh, to the medical center, people use the uh, pulse echo mode, uh, ultrasound pulse echo mode. They use the same probe made of hundreds of piezoelectric transducers. Usually, it's a one-dimensional probe. And what they do is not uh, one-shot imaging. It is an imaging where they create a very thin beam, ultrasonic beam, and they listen the echo in this beam, and after they move the beam electronically. And to do this, they have to focus in the medium. And they made the assumption in medical imaging that people know the speed of ultrasound, and they consider it's uniform. If it is uniform, typically 1,500 meters per second, it is easy to send signal that focus in one point. You have just to send short pulse with delay between them to have constructive interference here. And I call this focusing in transmit. And in receive, if you have a scatter, uh, sorry, if you have, a, I come back, sorry. Uh, in receive, uh, if you listen the echo of your scatter, you can also focus in receive by add, putting delay line and adding signal. And you do, you do what is called double focusing or confocal focusing. And this is what people used in medical ultrasound when you go to, to see the echographist. And now 
Did this work well and how it works? In fact, uh, to make an image, a full image, it is a sequential process. You send a first beam and you listen to the echo, a second beam, you listen to the echo, and you have to change the focal distance. And if you want to see things in what we call beam mode, uh, uh, you, you have to wait uh, all the shot to be sent. And typically, it allows you to have typically 50 to 100 frames per second. And people are very happy with this. And they see many things uh, in tissue, like this baby. And they see a lot of speckle here that come from all the echo of all the small scatter that exist in tissue. And here, it is blood. And the blood is also full of small uh, red cells, but the level of signal is smaller than this. And if you want to do Doppler, you will just listen this instead of listening this. Uh, but you have this image. But now, the assumption that people made is often wrong. For example, if you look liver, often images of liver are not very uh, Clear why? Because everybody has some fat layer, some muscle layer, and the velocity of sound in fat is low compared to the velocity in muscle and compared to the velocity in liver. And because of this, uh, you have aberration when you try to focus, uh, and this is one of the problems. Uh, and people also consider that each of the small scatter give rise to single scattering process. And in fact, it is not always true. You have also multiple scattering. And that is to say, many images are poor because there are distortion, the focusing is not good. Bon. How to solve this problem? Let us come back to time reversal. But now, let us look time reversal in reflection mode. You have an array of transducers. And imagine that you have a medium made only of one scatter, just a small scatter here, but you have an aberrating layer that you don't know. And you just send the first incoming wave, an incident wave that go through this medium. And if there is only one scatter, the scatter ref backscatter the wave. And what is coming back, if you put this in memories, and if you select in a time window just this wavefront, if you time reverse now this wavefront, it will exactly focus on this target. But this is a one point problem. And this tells you that you can make an autofocus very easily if you have a median made of one scatter. We, we push this technique to destruct kidney stone in the body or um, when you have a, a mine to autofocus on the mine uh, to do what you want with a mine. But a mine is for shallow water, uh, underwater uh, problem. But in fact, in reality, you have not only one scatter. You have much more scatter. And one thing which is quite interesting is that what we develop, which is the concept of iterative time reversal. Imagine that you have uh, an array of transducer, you have some aberrator, and you have here two reflector, one with a big uh, reflectivity, another with a smaller reflectivity. And if the distance between the two scatter is bigger than the size of a focal spot you have with this antenna, you can send a wave, you listen to the echo of the two scatter, it comes back here, you time reverse them, it's refocus two waves, one on the strong scatter, one on the weak scatter, and if you iterate, at the end, there is a power law, and the system will select only the biggest uh, scatter. And in your memory, you have you found what we call the first invariant of the time reversal operation. It's an invariant after you can continue to time reverse. It will always go on this scatter. Of course, this is nice, but... Uh, and if you look experimentally, it works very well. After some iteration, the strongest stack scatter is selected. But what you want is when you have many scatter, but I will speak first of a small number of scatter, now you want to learn how to focus on each scatter to have the exact wave front to focus on each scatter. How to do this? You can generalize the concept of iterative time reversal that allow you to focus on the strongest scatter. You can come back just on what we call the reflection matrix. Everything is linear here. 
all my transducers are broadband. And in fact, if I have an array of transducers, I can make a simulation of all the process I described by doing it time reversal iteration. I can just record a reflection matrix, each element located at U input, send a wave, each element located at U output, receive a wave, and I record a series of function of time uh, depending of U, U in, U out. When I have this, it is not exactly a matrix. It is a matrix, but of function of time. And I don't like to play with function of time. I prefer to have matrix of complex number. And when I get this information, now I can do a Fourier transform, and I create a matrix that I call the reflection matrix as frequency omega, that depend of U, U in and U out, and it is a matrix of complex number. And now, this matrix is quite interesting because if I make the singular value decomposition of this matrix, each singular value and each singular vector will correspond to one target if my targets are well disseminated. And let us understand this very quickly. Uh, if I work at one frequency, uh, if I consider that I have an input signal E that I send from my array, it's a complex number, uh, it's uh, one colon of that I send, I listen what comes back. Because I have my reflection matrix here, when I send this and this medium, I record R multiplied by E what I send, R being this reflection matrix. Now, if I do time reversal, it is at one frequency phase conjugation, I send back R star, E star, I send again, and when I, I come back, it is R, R star, E star. And all the time reversal process can be explained in terms of R multiplied by R star, or R dag. And this is what we call the time reversal operator. And if you want to learn how to focus on each of these targets, if they are well independent, you have just to take this operator and compute each all the invariant of the time reversal operator, these are the eigenvector. An eigenvector is a complex number on each transducer, that is to say it's a phase and an amplitude, and each eigenvector focuses on one target, and the strongest target has the strongest eigenvalue, and the other, the other eigenvalue gives you the smaller target. Doing this, uh, instead of doing uh, diagonalization of R, R star, it is easier if you know what is singular uh, decomposition of a matrix. Instead of working on R, R star, work just on R and do just the singular value decomposition of R. The singular vector of R is the same but the eigenvector of the time reversal operator. It gives a meaning to what are the singular vector of the matrix R. Okay, this is nice. But here, it is a problem, a multi-target problem, but all the target has to be well separated of large distance, bigger than the focal spot of your system. And if you do this, for example, you have here an aberrator, two targets, and the system learns the matrix. It counts how many eigenvectors I have, or eigenvalue uh, I have, significative, I have two here. You look what are the eigenvectors. Each eigenvector corresponds to the exact wavefront to focus on each target. And you can learn on a multi-target system how many targets you have and how to focus on each of them. But, of course, this is when you have a small number of targets. Now, let us look at another problem. Tissue, it is not two targets. Tissue, it is full of scatter. Uh, tissue are made of a random distribution of scatter that give rise to this noise that we call speckle noise in ultrasound. And uh, when you are focusing, for example, a first beam through this medium, for example, if you have here an aberrator, what you receive is a combination of the echo of all the scatter you have here and the focusing can be really bad because if you have some aberrator and what you record is this set of signal. It is a kind of noise. This is the time of arrival and this is the position. And if you iterate the process 
now iteration will not converge. Iteration converges only if I have a small number of targets. If you are iterating, you have to wait very long time before you select one bright spot. The system is completely uh, uh, unsuccessful. Unsuccessful, and the idea we have uh, long time ago was how to transform a random distribution of scatter in an artificial bright star. And the idea was the following: uh, if you want to learn how to create a bright star in a medium which is full of random scatter, you have to create many realization of speckle noise. And the way to do this is to use the concept which is called the isoplanetic patch concept. If you have an aberrator, and if you learn how to focus on a point through this aberrator, this is a law which is quite complex, but you, you know this law. And you know that now, if you have a point which is not very far from this point, the wavefront to focus on this point is exactly the same as this one, except a shift in direction. And there is an area here that we call the isoplanetic patch, for which uh, the wavefront you have to send on each point has exactly the same aberrating component plus a classical diffraction component, which is in fact a cylindrical or a spherical wave that can be directed in different directions. And if you work in this isoplanetic patch, you can create easily. And if you are outside of the isoplanetic patch, the wavefront you have to create to focus here is no more with this aberrating component. It's another aberrating component that you have to find. And if you have, for example, an image of liver, you have to know how many isoplanetic patch you have in the liver uh, and how many wavefront I have to find. And you have to found uh, how many zones of interest can correspond to different greens function for a bright spot in all this zone. How to make this game? Now, imagine that you begin by focusing in a random medium with a spherical wave or cylindrical wave. You listen all the echo. This is what you have in each of your transducer as the reflected signal. Uh, now, you put this in memory, and now you will send a second beam where you put a, a small steering angle to focus in another zone of speckle, uh, but always in the same isoplanetic patch. And this will give you back an echo uh, on each of the transducer that you have, but this e echo uh, is shift, and you can compensate the shift to put the echo together. And now you have a new realization of speckle from the, the same medium. And now if you do this uh, by doing micro-angling, you will uh, obtain different realization of speckle. And now you can average them coherently to create uh, a kind of deterministic virtual reflector by maximizing the cross-correlation between all these signals. And now you have, after some time, even you have focused in the medium very badly because you have an aberrator, you create a kind of echo from a virtual reflector which has the shape of your initial focal spot. But the focal spot can be big if you have aberration. And now you can iterate this and you can do the time reversal iteration. And if you do this, after some time, the system learn how to find a bright spot, uh, a unique bright spot, because you have transformed a random distribution in something which is deterministic. And now, at the end, you, you found the true uh, green function of a point, but you found this just by beginning your process in this medium. And you will see after that this is a singular value decomposition of the special matrix that I will speak of. Now, the problem is that if you have many zones in your medium, uh, you have to focus here and to move a focal point, to focus on another point and to move it. It will take a long time. And you want to do very quickly. How to do this very quickly in real time? But you have to use the concept of plane wave imaging that we developed to do ultra-fast imaging. 
plane wave imaging is just uh, something that uses the concept of time reversal. You send a plane wave in the medium instead of focusing. You record all the echo coming from the medium, you put them in memories, and once you have put all the echo in memory, you do in the computer the time reversal uh, operation plus a back propagation uh, to mimic a kind of parallel focusing in receive mode. If you are doing this, this is exactly what I explained at the beginning, you will create an image of your medium in one shot. You have sent a plane wave, you listen what come back, you do some assumption on the speed of sound in the medium, and you back propagate in the computer. And you have an image, but the image is taken at a huge velocity, you can have 10,000 frames per second. But if you look at this image, it's a poor image. You have just focus in receive by time reversal, but you have not focus in transmit, like in confocal imaging. And you have, a, for example, an image of a phantom full of, uh, with a bad contrast. If you compare this image that you obtain at a huge frame rate to an image obtained when you do confocal imaging, but uh, you have to send nearly 500 beams to make the image, uh, the quality is better in confocal imaging than with plain wave imaging. But what we can do to improve this is to do the following. Instead of sending only one plane wave and listening what come back and doing one term reversal, we send just a series of plane wave. And uh, we send three plane wave, 10 plane wave, 20 plane wave with different angle. And we record all the echo because everything is in memory. You send a series of plane wave. And now inside the computer, you can mimic focusing in transmit on each point area in by using different plane wave. Uh, you put the good angle and the good phase and you sum them to learn how to focus in the computer in transmit. In fact, uh, in transmit, you have not focus, you have sent plane wave, but after, because everything is coherent, you can do the job. And by mixing a certain number of plane wave, you can obtain the same quality of image that the confocal imaging. It is like super confocal because it focuses at each depth perfectly. It is done in the computer when you mimic focusing in transmit and focusing in receive is made by time reversal. When you, do, when you have this, it's quite interesting because in fact you have recorded a new matrix. It is always the reflection matrix. For each plane wave you have here, you listen all the echo and you put this in a box. And now you send another plane wave and you have a series of echo for different plane wave. All this is in memory. It is function of theta in, uh, the angle of the plane wave, and U out, the position of your transducer in the receive mode. When you have this, now you can transform this uh, matrix in something where you learn to focus everywhere inside the medium. We call this air in. It is a point inside the medium. And in the receive mode, the time reversal is like, like you have focusing at each point air out. And here, you mimic confocal imaging. That is to say, uh, you can, from the knowledge of this, create a confocal matrix uh, where you focus in transmit on each point and you do this everywhere. And if you do this, you, you, you make beautiful image, but the frame rate you have is very big. Typically, 1,000 frame rate, 1,000 image per second instead of 50 image per second. And we have developed this uh, in the past, uh, create a company, Supersonic Imaging, which is now an American company, Ologic, to create the first ultra-fast plane wave imaging system. And which has a lot of application. Shear wave elastography, it's measure the elasticity of tissue, functional ultrasound imaging, but I will not discuss of this. I will discuss of this matrix. What can we do with this matrix, uh, which is new? With this matrix, which is the reflection matrix that we measure is much more, much richer than a confocal image. In fact, for 
each theta in that you send in the medium, and for each transducer u out, you have a lot of information. What else can you do with the reflection matrix instead of doing confocal imaging, which is classical? Now, you can mimic uh, from this matrix uh, by mixing all the theta in. You can mimic focusing in a point R in that you select in the computer and listening what you will receive on each transducer U out. This is a matrix that we call R in, where you focus on each point and U out, which is the position of each receiving antenna. And when you have this matrix, it is exactly like I explained to learn the aberration of a medium. I have now to put different R in, very close one from the other, and to, to record on each U out the response. And after, I will have to do a singular value decomposition, and it will give me the exact way front to focus on each spot. And we can do aberration correction. I will show you this. But you can do something even more crazy. Because now when you have recorded this matrix, theta in, U out, U out position of transducer. Now you can, in the computer, synthesize a virtual source at any point R in by combining different plane waves. But you can, you can also, in receive, decide to listen what comes from a point a micro, which is not at the same position that they're in, but at another position. It is like I have a virtual microphone, and I can put virtual microphone everywhere. And I can mimic in the computer the story of my wave that focus on a virtual source at they're in, and I can look with the microphone what is the field in the medium. Because I have scatterers in the medium, I can see the movie uh, of a wave in the medium. Even if I have not microphone inside the medium, I create virtual microphone because of my random medium. And uh, the first thing is aberration correction. I will go fast. Uh, you, you have learned to focus at point R in, and you listen on each transducer U out, the matrix, but it is function of time. You have to do a Fourier transform to have complex number, and because you want to have broadband signal, you have to sum over the frequency all this uh, complex number, and you create a matrix of complex number, which is a broadband matrix. Why we want broadband? Because the axial resolution depends on the bandwidth you used. And if you have this broadband matrix now, uh, you can look when you have in your computer, you put different R in. Here I put R1, R2, R3. For each of them, I have in my memory, I construct the wavefront that come. I uh, put out the diffraction uh, that I have, and now it's I just get what is called a distortion matrix, and I have just to take the singular value decomposition of this matrix. I take the first singular vector, and this is a vector that will refocus back on a virtual reflector, and the reflector can be too big if the aberrations are big enough, and I have to iterate the process, and I do this in the computer. And if I do this in the computer, uh, it is singular value decomposition of this matrix, and uh, I can strongly improve image. For example, here, it's a breast imaging where there are microcalcification which are not seen uh, usually because in breast tissue there are strong aberration. And the system in each isoplanetic patch found the best green function and at the end you see things quite better. And you see the appearance of microcalcification. On a gallbladder, for example, if you have a strong noise, the system learn how to refocus in each spot. And you can correct aberration. This is one step. But the second step, which is even more interesting, it is the self-portrait of an ultrasonic wave. Nobody thinks that when you send wave inside the body and when you listen what come back, you can make the movie of what you have in the medium. But you can do this because the medium is full of scatter. And because of this, you can do uh, from the R in U out, 
it was a focus on point Erin. It is like I create here a virtual source. I can now transform uh, U out. These are all the transducers. The basis that I have here, I can put the basis in R out by making, uh, in fact, it's a Fourier transform. And I can create here a matrix which is R in, R out. That is to say, it is like I focus on point R in. It's a virtual source that I have created here in my computer. And I listen now what is coming from point R out. And now I will put many point R out everywhere. And if I do this, when you try to focus on R in, in the computer you see this movie. And you see a movie which presents the way the wave propagates in the medium. And uh, to obtain this, you have not only to create one virtual source, you have to create a set of virtual sources in an isoplanetic patch. And you make the averaging by the SVD. And when you have this movie, uh, if you look at time delta t equals zero, you see the size of a focal spot. And you can see where the focal spot is going. And from this, what you can do is the following. Imagine that during the time reversal step, you put a bad value for the velocity of sound. And you physically, you do your experiment with plane wave, you listen what come back, and now you look the movie of a wave that focus at some depth. And you have put this velocity, C, as a model of velocity. And if you look the movie, sorry, Uh, what to do to have a movie? Sorry, I cannot control the movie. It is pity. Uh, you, you will see that the, when the wave come back, if I have put a bad velocity, you will see that the focal spot will be created at a bad location, not the point red. And if you put another velocity, you will see that the focusing point that you imagine to have created focus at another. And because of this, you can deduce, uh, sorry, the movie is not working. You can deduce by making this analysis the time of flight. Ah, I have seen something, but it does not stay. Sorry. Uh, OK, I cannot do. And because of this, you have an image, for example, in the liver, which is a poor image. Now, because you make the movie of the wave everywhere in the liver, you see if the wave focus at the distance you think it's focus, and because you must think in terms of the time of flight, but depend on the velocity and on the position of your focus point. And here you have the integrated speed of sound that you found from this. And now you just apply this formula, and it will give you not the integrated speed of sound along one line, it gives you now the local speed of sound. That is to say, from the self-portrait of the wave inside the medium, you can make a map of the refractive index of ultrasonic wave. And you see here muscle where the speed of sound is 1,600 meters per second. You see here that the guy has a fatty liver because the velocity is uh, smaller. You see the fat. And from this image, by doing the self-portrait of the wave everywhere, you begin to see uh, a tomography of the speed of sound. And it is a refractive index map. This may have many applications, and uh, uh, I will stop on this for ultrasound. Now, how this concept can be used in optics? All here, the idea was uh, in a, uh, to send plane wave in the medium, to listen on each transducer of your receiving antenna the echo. Now, to do this in optics, it's a little bit more difficult. Uh, to send plane wave, you can send plane wave on a medium. Uh, you can use spatial light modulator or moving mirror uh, that send plane wave to eliminate a medium. And now, in uh, receive mode, uh, you have your CCD camera, but it is a camera that just measures the intensity. If you want to measure the amplitude and phase, you have to use an interferometer. And you have to use, uh, as a source, uh, 
typically, if you want to have uh, some time-gated matrix, or you can use the femtosecond laser, but it is narrowband, or you can use a multispectral source uh, swept laser where you change the frequency of your laser. And now, you know that optical microscopy uh, in reflection mode is very used, and there are many applications. You know that one of the nice applications was confocal microscopy, but it takes time. You, you learn to focus both in transmit and receive, but you have to scan your medium to make an image. And you know that if you want also to have resolution, good axial resolution, you can use optical coherence tomography, where by using an interferometer and a reference arm, uh, you can learn how to make a B Uh, scan image uh, of tissue. But these techniques are scanning techniques. You have to move your beam. And in optics, people have developed, and especially at uh, Institut Langevin, Claude Bocara has developed a, a concept which is called full field CT, where you use what is called a linear interferometer, and you use an incoherent source, which is quite large, and you have a camera here, and This interferometer, one arm is going through a reference, and you use a broadband source, incoherent source. And by moving a mirror, you can select here the image of a plane, a different plane. And this full field of CT is nice, but you have to change the position of your mirror to, do, to have a 3D image. Now there is another technique where you have not to move your mirror, which is called full field swept source OCT. Instead of sending a random broadband source of light, you just send a coherent source of light, but by changing the frequency in time. It is a swept source, and you have a very large excursion in frequency, And there is this, this concept of full field swap source, uh, where instead of having to move this PZT to make an image, you send different frequency. You have a reference arm that will receive this different frequency at each time. And uh, you can, by measuring here the intensity, because you have an interferometric device, uh, obtain a kind of hologram of your medium, and this is called holoscopy, and you have sent one plane wave. Uh, in the reference arm, you have one plane wave, which is created here, and here you have one plane wave that comes on uh, cornea, and you receive the echo, and you do your digital holography to make an image. What we want to do is better than this and better than this. In fact, we want to do in optics the multispectral reflection matrix. And this is a work that we are doing in the lab, and it is Alexandre Aubry, which is the leader of all this new concept, with my colleague Claude Bocara. And the idea is the following. Uh, we want exactly to mimic what I show you with ultrasound. With ultrasound, I can send plane wave at different angle. I receive on each transducer. And when I have all my matrix, I can play everything. Now, we used a galvanometric mirror that move very quickly. And because in 10 milliseconds, you change, you, you change each frequency with, that is a different color, you record this. And all this takes you uh, 0.2 seconds. You have recorded many plane waves. But here, it is not 1D plane wave. It is 2D, because you have to play in two dimensions, and you record on the camera plane that we call air out, the position, which is also 2D, all the uh, reflected echo from the medium. And we create a matrix like this, and when you have this matrix that you have for each frequency, for each theta in, And for each air out, air out now is a position in the plane of your uh, camera. And the position in the plane of, of your camera is conjugated through this optical lens to one position in your cornea 
at one position. What you see in the camera plane is exactly what happened in one plane inside your medium of interest. And we record, in fact, a matrix like this. I will not explain you all. But from this matrix, we make some spatial change. And by having all this multiple illumination, and by in receiving mode, receiving on each position of your camera, which is associated to each position uh, on this plane, we, we, we can create a confocal image. But here, you create like a time movie. T is like the time of flight when we have done this. And the time of flight, it is like in echography, in ultrasound. You have time to listen when echo come back. Here, from the multispectral excitation, which is coherent, you can create the same time of flight imaging. And we can play with this. I will not explain you how we do the business. But with this, uh, you can record a huge multispectral reflection matrix on a piece of medium. And this matrix uh, corresponds to uh, typically one millimeter cube of tissue. You record all the data coming from this. Now, when you have all this, you can now play. If you compare, uh, for example, if you look here in the cornea, an image produced by full field OCT uh, with swept source. You have this kind of image. Now, if you use the confocal system, because you focus both in transmit and receive, you have a nice image, much more contrasted than this image. These are two classical images, confocal, but confocal work only at one depth. Now, if you take what we have done, if you look with a confocal system, a depth which is not at the good depth, the image is not clear. But now, if you record the full multispectral, sorry, the full multispectral reflection matrix, uh, which is a huge number of data. It is typically 50 gigabyte of data. Uh, you record this. Now, from this, you can reconstruct a perfect confocal image at each depth. But you have not to to move anything. All this was recorded uh, in the multispectral reflection matrix. And now you can play with this to make a 3D image. Uh, typically, these are sample uh, where the, the not very deep, typically 500 micron depths. And when you look this, you can also learn by the technique I show you. Uh, with a singular value decomposition, you can find for each pixel of the image, if there are aberration, what is exactly the phase law of each aberrator. And from this, you can compensate the aberration. It is like adaptative optics in microscopy, but it is adaptative optics on each pixel of your volume. And you learn what are the best way to focus. And, and from this, you, you can create new image. Here, it is some 3D image of the skin, where you can see a lot of details uh, coming from this. I, uh, I, it will take some time to have this kind of um, optical microscope, because the optical microscope that we create here use exactly the concept of reflection matrix with plane wave illumination, uh, and you record. And, uh, and once you have this, you, you, you can play. But to make a full 3D movie, it takes nearly one hour. That is to say, you record the data very quickly in 0.2 seconds. And after, you need one hour to make the movie. But this is uh, just now. This one hour uh, work on the data uh, can be, in the future, become quite smaller. When we have developed the ultra-fast imaging technique for ultrasound with the plane wave, uh, when we were doing this in the lab, it takes 45 minutes to make the movie. 
And when you create the company supersonic imaging, uh, the ultra fast movie, instead of need uh, 45 minutes, it need one second. And today, all the apparatus that we saw, that we sail for ultra fast imaging in the body, it is instantaneous. All the process is made instantaneously. Here in optics, it will take time because we, we begin by 50 giga byte of information uh, that we have to, to work on. Well, I, I will, uh, I think, I, I will stop here on showing you the group in the lab that work on matrix imaging, and uh, Alexandre Aubry is now the leader of the group. And in fact, uh, it is a nice example of what we have done in ultrasound uh, was not so difficult in ultrasound because we have the full control of all the transducers. We found different techniques, and uh, Alexandre, with the help of Claude Bocara, now pushed this in optics. Uh, and we think that matrix imaging, because I call this matrix, uh, you can, uh, when you record your reflection matrix, you can change the basis. Instead of having plane wave, you focus in the medium. And the next step that we want to do in matrix imaging in optics is to make the map of the refractive index of tissue, which is very difficult. Today, people do image of the reflectivity of tissue. And making a map of the refractive index of tissue is a big challenge. And this is what we try to do in ultrasound, when I show you the velocity. Uh, and um, I, I will conclude uh, here. Uh, the fact that we are in the digital era, that software uh, can be done uh, faster and faster, make that the concept of imaging can be completely uh, revisited. The old good lens, which is a beautiful tool, lens is a good device to make a, an image. It's nice when the medium is not too complicated. But uh, now with uh, reflection matrix, we think that we can do a, a lot. Okay, I thank you. Thank you.